Back live in Las Vegas as Mountain West Football Media Days roll on and things are trending upwards in Fort Collins as the Rams in their third season under the direction of longtime veteran head coach of the Mountain West, Jay Norvell. And Jay is kind enough to make some time for us here on the set here at Mountain West Football Media Days. Bridget Howard and Jesse Kurtz here. Uh, coach, third season in Fort Collins. Uh, you have continually build you, you you are going in the right direction now all of a sudden there's a lot of expect expectations people are pointing at the Rams saying this could be a very dangerous team this year yeah, your thoughts I think when you have good players you get people's attention and so you know I I've been saying this most of the day you know when, when we took the job over in Fort Collins we had to make a decision we had a lot of players that we had to recruit we decided to recruit high school players. We felt like we can recruit the best talented kids out of high school that fit our profile. And so because of that, we've been very young the last two years. Yeah. We've had a lot of good young players. We played a freshman quarterback the last two years, which is nobody ever wants to do that. Uh, but we really believe in Braden. We felt like he yeah, has a talent to be a great player. And uh, so we, we wanted to ride through the mistakes that he made. and. Um, but now we're in year three. Uh, we're not the young kid on the playground anymore. Uh, we're growing up. We're bigger than we've ever been. We're faster than we've ever been, and we have experience at all positions. How about the the experience that Braden did get? I mean, not only did he get thrown into the fire as a freshman, he gets thrown into the fire in, in one of the, the biggest games of the year, the most watched games. He performed so incredibly yeah. well, poised under all kinds of pressure, and then through the season, yeah. goes for 3,400 yards, uh, 22 touchdowns, led the Mountain West in passing yards per game. You have expectations for a kid, but, I mean, he had to uh, even surpass what you thought he could do in a freshman year. No, he did, and... and and the thing about Braden is he's extremely smart. He's really talented. He's super competitive, uh, and he's not afraid. Mm. He's just not afraid. And when he makes mistakes, he keep, comes back firing. And uh, you know he really stepped up in that first start versus Colorado, and and had a huge game. Uh, had 300 yard receivers. Torrey broke the school record in receptions that game. And so I just think. Uh, Braden's got a chance to make a huge step this year. You know, the thing that you got to remember about Braden is that we played a, a walk on running back yeah. for most of the season. And so he didn't have an experienced running back to take pressure off of him. So that made a lot of pressure on Braden. So I think we're going to be so much better at that position and the supporting cast will really help him be better. What has been your message to Braden? Because I have to imagine he knows how valuable this experience has been for him yep. the last year and now moving into this year with more confidence. But what has your message been to him as he enters this year? Well, an amazing thing happens, you know, when you play 12 football games as a quarterback and you can go back and watch the mistakes that you made, the things that you did well, you really learned so much about yourself. And Braden's had a chance to do that. We've watched all the film with him, digested everything, and he understands his decision-making needs to be a little bit different in some situations. And I think he'll learn from that. I think he's much more comfortable in his role. And he is the leader of our program now, so we're, we couldn't be happier to have him. To have a guy like Tory Horton <laughs> to help bring that veteran leadership and give that confidence to your young quarterback, um, he, it's it's very safe to say that he will be one of the most uh, remembered players in Colorado State history. Um, has a chance to break some more records this year, but yep. um, how important is it to have a guy like Tory leading this it's offense? It's just uh, it's a dream to have a guy like that to coach, and and uh, he's one of my favorite players that I've ever coached. You know, he's not only in our best player, but he won the academic award for our team. So mm. he's doing it in all areas and such a great leader, such a great example from everybody else. He's got a chance to be a three time thousand yard receiver in our program, which he'll be the first in school history. He's got a chance to break the Mountain West record for receptions, which Devonte Adams had. And so just an amazing career he's had. and. We're so excited to have him back and leading our program this year. 
Coach, you, when we have talked in the past, dating back to uh, previous stops, you have always shined when you talked about your wide receivers. Yeah. Romeo Dobbs was, <laughs> was one of the best all time that you yeah. had at Nevada. And it seems like you've always had a, an affinity for the wide receivers yeah. like Torrey. What sets him apart and makes him special from all the great wide ups that you have coached? You know, he, he, just, he just does the fundamental thing so well. And I think that's what makes great players great is that they don't take those things for granted. Yeah. And, and, and uh, he's got a great passion for the game. You know, I think the one common denominator with him and Romeo is that there's no difference between practice and the game. Mm. He competes as hard in practice as he does in the game. And that's what prepares him for those game situations so well. So he's super smart. Um, he's very versatile. He can throw the ball as well as catch the ball and run the ball. And he's about 15 pounds heavier. And, and he's really changed his body this year, and I think he's ready to have an amazing season. Let's talk about your running back room. You, you, you made a point to bring that up, that it's different this year. Yeah. Uh, Justin Marshall got some experience as a, as a freshman, uh, ran for 100 yards in his debut, first to do that in a Ram uniform since 1974. Yeah. But Kobe Johnson back, he was injured, yes. a kid that transferred in from North Dakota State. Who else in your running back room will fortify that, that takes some of the pressure off that passing game? No doubt. I, I think we have a couple young running backs that are probably, as good as we've ever had in Justin Marshall and Damian Henderson and um, both those guys are back we also have uh, Kobe Johnson back and Avery Morrow's back and those guys are veteran players and that room gives us depth and uh, that we didn't have last yeah. year and so um, I think that's going to take a lot of pressure off Braden and I really think it's the key to our season if we can really be productive running the football I think it'll help change our defense. I think it'll take pressure off of Braden. It'll help cut our turnovers down. It's really the key to her whole season. Jack and Tori spoke with us both yesterday, and they were very proud uh, when telling us about the team chemistry yeah. this year and sharing with us that they feel like everyone has a voice, whether yep. you're a youngster or you're a veteran. Everyone has a voice and everyone matters. Yeah. Um, and you don't always see that in a college football locker room. Why was why is that so important to the success of this team this year? Well, I think that was part of our plan, you know, I think we still play a sport where experience and chemistry matter. Sure. And so, and that's very difficult in today's football with all the transfers and the NIL and all the, the look at me first mentality. Chemistry is really hard to, to work on. And we've had kids that we've just been consistent with for three years. Um, we have leadership that has learned some tough lessons and we're, we're forcing the younger players to go through the same process. And so that continuity is something that we've worked very hard on. And, and if you ask our strength coach, it's the best summer we've ever had because we just don't have any guys painting outside the lines. We have everybody doing what they're supposed to do. Nobody's late. Um, everybody's working hard. And, um, and I just think that continuity is going to pay off this season. How would you say this team chemistry ranks among some of the best teams that you've been able to coach? You know, it's a great question, and, and we'll really see when we start practicing mm -hmm. playing. But, you know, so far this offseason and this summer, it's been the best we've ever had. And I do, I can say this, it's by far the fastest team I've ever coached. And it's the biggest team I've ever coached. And, um, you know, our wide receiver room is starting to look like it did when we were at Nevada. And, and um, um, and that's really exciting because we were really good there and and uh, we have size and strength. We signed a six eight tight end uh, in Jackson Warren. We think is going to be really good. We brought in Jordan Ross as a freshman from Warren who's really special. The first day uh, I walked on the field, they were running sprints. Tori looked at me and said, I, th I think it's time for me to pass the torch. This <laughs> and so he's never lost a sprint since he's been there until Jordan got here. So we've got some exciting players. Armani Winfield's another transfer from Baylor who's going to be an exciting mm -hmm. receiver for us. So we've added some more weapons to our arsenal. 
Defensively, you got a guy that I think was certainly in the mix, should be in the mix for defensive player of the year in Jack Howell. Back to back years, 100 plus tackles. Um, legacy, his, yeah. his his father played at Colorado State, was a classmate of mine yeah. uh, way back in the, the dark days of, of, yeah. uh, of college athletics. Uh, yeah, 1990s, uh, John Howell was incredible. Jack Howell is, is trying to do it one better as a leader, as a four year starter for you. Uh, the value that he plays, just a been there, done that and yeah. bleeds green and gold. Yeah, he's a legacy player. His father was a great player. His dad actually played in the NFL for Tampa yep. when I was in the Super Bowl against him. They beat us when I was with the Raiders. And and but but Jack is such an amazing leader um, and a great example. And I think that's one of the things we have guys like Jack Howe and Tory Horton who have, they have the individual accolades. They want to win as a team. You know, they are putting so much pressure on their teammates to do the right things and workouts and training that, you know, we're just going to have excellent results because of their leadership. And it makes me so excited as a coach. A Colorado kid at Valor right. Christian. And then uh, the other guy that will help anchor the backside on the defense, another Colorado kid, Henry Blackburn. Yes. And you saw that kid's passion last year, how yep. much it means to him to win football games yep. and to compete. What did he prove to, to the locker room and the way that he competed, yeah. the way that he had his teammates back last year? He's got a, he's got an incredible passion for the game. And, and I just love his leadership. He's one of our captains. And, you know, as a coach, you can only paint the picture and point guys in the right direction. But you got to have that love for the game. You got to have that passion for the green and gold. And, and Henry has that. He brings that that edge to the game that we need as a team. And you couldn't have two better guys in the middle yeah. of your defense than Jack Howell and Henry Blackburn. Well, let's talk about one of the best names in college football, in my personal opinion. Boom, Jock yep. Boys for a breakout season. Last year had 34 tackles in his freshman campaign. What excites you about his chances and his opportunity to make a big name for himself this year? I love Boom, Jock. He does have a, an all-star name. And what a be I don't know if you could have a better name for a, a, a linebacker. Um, but Boom has got all the qualities we look for in a dominant defensive player. He's got size, he's got smarts, he's got athletic ability, and so important at that linebacker position. I think the other key for our team is running the ball on offense, but also stopping the run on defense and just being consistent and forcing people to have to throw the ball against us. Um, boom is a big part of that. And so him, him having a great year is a great key to our success. Your specialists return, and there are a couple of good ones. Last year, you brought Patty Turner here. It's not often that we yeah. do see punters at Mountain West Media Day, but in speaking to you last year, it was what he meant to the locker room and, and being a leader. Yep. Now him back for you after another sensational season, average over 43 yards a kick. Uh, I mean, to have a weapon on special teams at the punter position is of great value. You know, we, we like to use our punt team as an offensive play. We do a lot of unusual things. And we try to use Patty's talents. He's a he's an Australian rugby player, so he can run different directions and kick directional kick the ball. We try to you shoot a lot of line drives and try to hit other players and try to get turnovers. He's the absolute best pooch punter I've ever been, huh. college, <laughs> college or pro. You know, he could stand at midfield and he can ask you, coach, where do you want me to put it? And I said, well, put it out of bounds on the three. And he'll kick it, boom, right out of bounds on the three. He's got incredible control that way. And uh, and I told him, I said, I hate punting into the end zone. I said, if you're going to punt in the end zone, we're just going to go for it. I'm not even going to put you on the mm. field. And so he's fabulous at that. So I just think he's a huge weapon. You know, we have our kicker back in Jordan Noyes as well. And then we got the best punt returner in the league in Torrey Horton back. Yeah. So our special teams are in good hands. You mentioned Jordan Noyes. Uh, the the interesting thing about him, of course, he's going to be 32 during the football <laughs> season. He's a father of three. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, by the way, he's a heck of a college football player. Do you treat him differently knowing that he's at a different stage in life? Yes. Or is that? Yes, you yes. do. Okay. <laughs> that How was so? No, no yes. thought about How that so? one. How so? No, he's got more kids than me. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I treat him a way different. You know, he's got a minivan. <laughs> Sometimes I tell him to get out of here at the end of practice and go pick his kids up. But, no, he's – it's just having that maturity yeah. on your team is so important. And, you know, field goal kickers have a unique job 
and uh, but he's just so trustworthy. You know, he's so dependable. He handles his business. I don't have to worry about him like I do some of the young guys. Sure. And so he's been an amazing addition to our team. And I think he'll be. He made some big kicks for us last year. You know, he made he made uh, the, the kick that beat Boise. Yep. You know, we we went ahead in the UNLV game and a late field goal. He he made a kick against uh, Air Force in the snow. Yeah. It was one of the best kicks I've ever seen. You know, our offensive line had to clear a spot out for him and. <laughs> You know, it, it, it takes a lot of focus and concentration to make a kick in those conditions, and he did an amazing job of that. How does having a player like Jordan on the team just give a different perspective on life in the locker room? It's great because he has a whole different set of problems than our other guys do, you know. And I wasn't kidding. I mean, he does have a minivan, and he's got all his kids <laughs> the in best. there. And, you know, his car breaks down, and we got to figure out how to help him do that and all this stuff. But... But um, no, it's 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 uh, he, it just it's good to have that perspective. You know, Patty's from Australia. He brings a whole different perspective mm. as well. And it just makes it's the it's one of the great things about football is we got guys from big cities, small towns, international uh, communities. Um, and it really comes together to be something special. Let's take a look at your schedule that you guys will uh, face the Rams in Fort Collins. That's a, uh, a pretty uh, stern opener, Coach. No big deal going down to Texas, a place that is uh, near and dear to your heart, yep. right? Yep. Austin, spend some time down there. You got Northern Colorado. That'll be a fun one in the battle of uh, folks up in Northern Colorado. And then that uh, September 14th game, was one of the most watched football games last year in Boulder. The thing that I point out this year, other than it's two heated rivals, we know that there's going to be massive interest, but it's the Buffs' first trip to Fort Collins yeah. since one young Jesse Kurtz was a freshman in Fort Collins in 1996. Wow. Damon Washington was the, the uh, running back for Colorado State. Moses Moreno was taking snaps underneath. I mean, to have the Buffs in Fort Collins for the first time in, what is that, 28 years, if I'm doing the math yeah. right? I mean, that that's big that they're going to be up north for the first time. It's funny you, you talked about Moses. We were going to try to get Moses and all those guys back yeah. for that game. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's a great rivalry, first of all. And, um, you know, the game used to be played in Mile High. And uh, we built this amazing new stadium. And uh, now it's a home and home. And so two years ago, they were supposed to come play in Fort Collins. It got canceled yeah. because of COVID. So we went there last year, big audience for the game. And now they come to Fort Collins this year. And it'll be a, it'll be a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, you know, whenever Colorado State and Colorado get together, it's a passionate game and a heated rivalry. And uh, having them play in the new stadium this year in Fort Collins, it, it'll even add more to it. When you look at that beginning of the schedule there and then knowing what you have when you get into conference action, um, what expectations do you have for this team in those first couple of games yeah. to set yourself up for success once you get to what we all know is going to be a tough conference season? Yeah, so so our goal, our goal is to be an elite college football program. We want to play our very best. We want to be able to play anybody, anywhere, anytime. And, mm -hmm. and so we've been building our roster to be able to compete with teams like Texas and, and the different teams on our schedule. Um, we want to go out and go compete with Texas and, and, and see what happens in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, we have seven home games. And so I just think that's just a unique advantage that we have this year. And every once in a while, you get that in your career. Um, but we, we really want to we want to go undefeated at home. I mean, that's a realistic goal for us. I think uh, we want to have a reputation of playing great in Canvas. And then we want to go out and, and, and win our fair share on the road. And, and if we can do those things, we're going to have a great season. And so this is a team we have high expectations for. We have experience. We have kids that have proven that they could play at this level. And now it's it's important for us to go out and play as a team and reach our potential. Yeah, the pieces are there, and we're excited right. to see it all come together this season. That's Jay Norvell, Colorado State head coach. Coach, we appreciate you making the Thank time you. for us today. Good luck this me. season. Thank you. Good luck to you, Coach. The Colorado State Rams will open up the season again at Texas on August 31st.
More to come here from Las Vegas at Mountain West Football Media Days. When we come back after this short break, we'll be joined by the longtime head coach of the Fresno State Bulldogs, Jeff Tedford, will join us on set to talk about the Bulldogs, the upcoming slates, and what we can expect from the Red Wave. That's next here on Mountain West Media Days, live from Circa Resort and Casino.